From the top level champion who beat Manny Pacquiao to his upcoming fight with Aaron Chalmers, Mayweather has come a long way from his previous highs. But first things first, is he really retired? He wouldn't be the first fighter to retire only to come back for some more rounds. But even here, Mayweather outscored his opponents by returning to the ring two times after announcing retirement. The first time he did so was in 2007, following his split decision win against Oscar De La Hoya. Giving him a 38-0 record, this fight would seem like a great career high to end on. But with great power comes, well, I don't know. But 2009 saw a very powerful boxer back in the ring and he was prepared to win. His legacy point shot up till he retired in 2015. It was the second retirement for the five division champion. It was also a spectacular finish to a storied character with a unanimous decision win over Andre Berto for an undefeated 49-0 record. That would seem like the end of his story, but maybe Floyd wanted to test out if the third time's really the charm. This third unretirement took place in 2017 against an MMA artist this time. The crossover bout ended in a 10th round knockout that took both boxing and MMA by storm. Maybe he wanted to make it an even score. His third match up rounded his win streak up to a 50 and 0 against the best in the business. Ever since then, he's fought only exhibition bouts that are less risky to him and to his legacy. It might even be hurting his legacy now, especially since a former competitor, the Pac-Man, still kicking it and sending offers his way. And as the undefeated continues to duck them while fighting middling exhibition bouts, fans must be asking themselves, is Floyd Mayweather really undefeated? anymore. All the more relevant as the boxer continues to consider himself the GOAT, ranking himself above heavyweights both past and present. Money has compared himself with champs like Muhammad Ali and isn't afraid to sound out his opinion. Although as his career comes into its twilight years, it's hard to think of a man with 27 knockouts in his pro career as second to anyone. The real question is, can he give us something he hasn't already done? Have we seen all of Floyd's talent, or can he come back to shock up in more ways than one? It's a question fans have been dealing with for quite a while. Mayweather conservative approach to playing it safe has netted him just as many victories as it has earned him critics. Some say he sold outs, whereas others blame his style for being boring. I think both arguments hold some kind of weight but it is his exhibition fights that may be doing most of the damage to his legacy. They are just not on his level. Earning a name as an exhibition specialist seems like a desperate career choice, even for a retired fighter. The fact that a boxer of Mayweather's caliber has chosen exhibitions as his newest battleground is even more awkward. After reigning over five divisions and retiring with half a century's worth of exciting, gripping matches, you expect more from him. If anything, fans were eager to see him ditch the box and move strategy that he's dominated with over the years. But rather than take on new challenges, it seems like the exact opposite is happening. Mayweather is playing it safe and boring. After a career of standout victories over a brigade of the best boxers ever, from Manny Pacquiao to Saul Alvarez, Floyd gave his fans every bit and then some. It was all well and good, except for one thing, the 46-year-old self awarded claim of TBE, meaning the best ever. That's a bold claim to make when Manny's still going strong and challenging him for a win and the featherweight division is still stacked. In the meantime, Mayweather's fighting exhibition fights against kickboxers like Nasukua and YouTuber boxer Logan Paul. It was a train wreck for Floyd's legacy in the second one, where the then 43-year-old was unable to knock out the social media celebrity. But both fights did prove one thing, Floyd's biggest target is the purse. He scored a knockout on that front in both fights. He reportedly earned $9 million off his 2018 exhibition fight and was rumored to earn around $50 million against Logan Paul, with Showtime confirming pay-per-view sales north of $1 million for the Logan matchup. I wouldn't put 50 mils as too far off the mark. His performances in these bouts have been far from his greatest hits, especially 
the event of the century against 42-year-old Manny. The hustle's still on for Manny, but Mayweather's tipped his hat once and for all. It's just unfortunate that it was to Logan Paul. The five-division champ admits it wasn't real boxing. That part of his career is over. The champ's retired, hung up his belt, and has found a new focus. He's pursuing it relentlessly, too, like a real champion going after his goal. As he put it, generating generational wealth is the latest goal. He's fully committed to it, too. After dabbling into NFT, branding, marketing, flashy cars, and his own promotion, which is named after himself, obviously, it's his world starting and ending with Mayweather. He's ready to roll with these exhibition punches for as long as he can, but he still manages to set a few minor milestones along the way. At least his six exhibition bouts since he formally retired will be special for it's going to be his debut in the UK. If you look at it that way, it's a milestone, yeah. Actually, that's really the most interesting or exciting thing about Floyd's recent fights. Like his recent matches, it's geared for maximum revenue and everything else takes a back seat. Set at 40 US dollars by the Zeus Network Online UK, it's higher than Joshua versus Usyk. Even Fury and Wilder couldn't bring in this PPV price for their bout. In that sense, Mayweather's still at his peak as he continues to bring in huge purses and proves to be the biggest cash cow in boxing. But this matchup seems a bit too safe even for him. Even Cowardly, as a competitor, has a weaker profile than arguably any of his competition. Continuing in the trend of his exhibition opponents, he's far from reality TV show fame. Plus, the 35-year-old Joker has a far from a distinguished career in the MMA. With a 5-3 record and a unanimously decided loss to Austin Clem more than three years ago. It's almost insulting to the division that his royal pain is billing bigger numbers than the heavyweight championship bouts even. It's confirmed that Prime Mayweather is gone. I think it's a painful realization for any boxer to know that their time has come. You just can't deal with the pressures anymore of being a full-time champ. The challengers keep knocking on your door and it's only a matter of time before they hand you the first loss of your career. It means a great deal then for Floyd to have hung up his belt and taken reality on the chin. He has paid his dues and now he's done. He might earn big numbers for as long as he can wing it, but he's also not going to let his undefeated legacy suffer. Perhaps this is why he was reported to have turned down a $65 million offer from a Singapore group to fight the Pac-Man. There are much safer, easier ways for money to earn his worth. I think that's as smart a champion as we ever saw because he knows when to bow out before you have to tap out. It shows a remarkable presence of mind and humble attitude to realize that. This is also why I don't think Mayweather will take on a real fight again.